Hey everybody, welcome to today's session with Tegris Consulting. My name is Jarrett Donaldson. And today, the task at hand is to teach you a little bit more about the data transfer workbench import templates that SAP Business One uses when helping you get implemented um, with a new system. Because um, oftentimes you're gonna have an old legacy system that has all of the information uh, master data information that you want to bring over to your new installation of SAP Business One. And you now need to somehow get that information into the same format that's going to be used here. And so we do that through what are called import templates. And every different master data um, or table of data that can be stored in SAP Business One has a separate template that can be populated um, to bring that information over from your old system to your new system. And during today's session, we're going to focus on the most common master data that is brought over, which is your business partners. And business partners are, is a term used to, to uh, reference your customers, your vendors, and your leads from your old system. And so all that information is going to need to come out and get put into a template. And so the best way to start with that is not by looking at the template itself, but by looking at your installation of SAP Business One and seeing what is the end picture going to look like? So this is the business partner master data screen and it has a couple tables of information that's being stored here. So you can see there's hundreds of fields in a couple of different tables that store this information in different tabs um, that, that sometimes are referenced to those different tables. And so usually what I recommend is you first come in here and take a look at all the fields that are possible to be populated and which ones are important for you and which ones are currently captured in your old system and make a list of those maybe it's 10 maybe it's 20 maybe it's 30 fields that are going to be brought over from your old system to your new but come in here and see what's possible so maybe a code for your customer is important or your vendor or your lead maybe a name maybe a group that you're going to group these customers into maybe a federal tax ID Maybe a generic phone number for the company. Maybe a generic email for the company. Maybe you have an internal salesperson that you're going to assign. Um, maybe you have multiple addresses, like a bill to address, or east, west coast, and main where, warehouses for shipping. Maybe you have multiple contact people that have, have information that needs to be stored about each contact person individually, their position, their title, their phone numbers, their email addresses. Maybe you have payment information, like payment terms. Maybe you have properties for reporting purposes of different business partners. All of these, these pieces of information can be brought in. So like I said, first thing, make a list of the things that are most important to you they are gonna be brought over. And once you have that list, then we can go open up the templates and one by one copy and paste that information over to the template. And so when you get a template from your partner, SAP Business One Partner, it's probably going to be blank. It's going to look like this. It's going to have a name up here letting you know what, what table of information is being populated. So this is the generic business partner table, the OCRD table, and all of the hundreds of fields and columns that can be populated. And so like I said, instead of starting from here and trying to go one by one with each column and figuring out if you have that, start with your 10 pieces, you know, 10 fields that are gonna be brought in and then go find those individually here. So if, if it was the card code or the, the customer code, you now can go find that and copy and paste from your old system into your new system. If they, you were bringing in the name of the customer, go ahead and copy and paste into this column. If you now had the customer group that you're gonna bring over, Go ahead and find where it's at in the columns. Oh, there it is in column D. Copy and paste it into column D. And keep doing that until you've finished with your list of 10, 15, 20, 30 columns rather than going one by one. Um, you'll notice that there are these little notes assigned up here to the different fields that are being populated. These, these notes are very important because they tell you a little bit about what each field is. It gives you a description because sometimes these these, these uh, codes won't mean anything to you, but if you hover over, it'll tell you description and you'll identify what field, so here's the federal tax ID, matches up with what field in SAP Business One. And it also gives you syntax information. It's important because 
maybe your old system had a different syntax rule for that field that's, that's going to be unique compared to the syntax that's here in SAP Business One. So when you're copying and pasting over, you might have to do some tweaking after you pasted it to match up. So like with the, the customer's name here, we can store these values alphanumeric characters with a maximum field length of 100. So if you had a name that was you know 110 characters, you would have to go ahead and go do some tweaking in here after you pasted it to make sure it was less than that, that minimum allowed. Or there may be valid values that aren't allowing free text. Like example here with the card type, there are only three types that SAP Business One allows, a customer, a vendor, or a lead. And you might have to use these exact terms that are valid values. And so by hovering over these, these little notes, you're gonna get a lot of valuable information about what can be populated in each of these different fields. To give you an example of what one might look like in some common fields that are populated, let's go ahead and open one up that I've already pre-populated with some information. So these are probably the 10 most col common fields that, that, that uh, companies will bring over as they're implementing a new system. So the actual code of the, the business partner and this can be any code that you want as long as it follows the rules of 15 characters max. Um, I usually do something like C for customers and leads to start it off and V's for vendors. You then go ahead and populate a name. So here I have a couple populated already, Tegris Consulting, SAP. You would identify what type of customer it is or what type of business partner, whether it's a customer. You can see here, this is the valid value that they told me I can use. Under, or lowercase c, capital C for customer, and then same thing for leads and suppliers. Um, another common field that's populated is the customer vendor group. So a grouping of, for reporting purposes, you can come in here and type in the name, but usually what's gonna happen is after you type in the name, your, your partner will give you a code that will correspond to each of these, these names. And you'll go in after the fact and replace these these names with a code like 100 or 102 or 103 that will correspond the system gives to that name of that group after it's been entered into, into SAP Business One. These are commonly left empty because they're going to be populated and, and pre-populated um, as the defaults from the address template that we'll fill in later. But a common one that's filled in is a generic company phone number. Um, a second phone number or a fax. And this is not for your individual contacts, but just a generic one. Another common field here is column in, which is the payment term. So net 30, net 60, cash basic. You can populate these here and you'll notice that I've left a few of these blank. And that was on purpose to let you know that these are not mandatory. If the system doesn't tell you that it's mandatory, it's not. And so if this customer, customer 1006, or this lead doesn't have a payment terms, go ahead and leave it blank, that's fine. Another common field that's populated is the credit limit, if this customer or lead has a credit limit. Um, and then the, the other common ones are if you have an internal sales employee that is assigned to this customer or this business partner or this vendor. And then if the company has a generic email address, that can be populated here. And then so on and so forth until you're complete. Shipping type here in column BA and like I said, this will have a code eventually, but go ahead and put the name in there and let that get replaced later. And then all the way to the very end, you can see there's hundreds and hundreds of fields that are gonna be populated. Um, the ones that are tricky sometimes are these ones called properties. So you can see your property one, property two, property three, property four, property five, property six, all the way through about 60. These can be populated with a yes or no answer. And the system prefers the format or syntax of lowercase t, caps yes, or T no. Go ahead and fill those in, whether those need to be yes or no, if you are going to be bringing in properties. And as a reminder, if we go back, what they look like are here. They're just simply check boxes, yes or no, of if these things apply to that business partner for future reporting purposes. So if you have those, you can populate those here and they match, they correspond. So here is the first one right here um, that was for property one that corresponds with property number one right here, no matter what name you give it. So that is the original template um, for business partners. Um, like I said, if you have additional fields that I didn't talk about, just go ahead and find, you can do a search in here and try to find the column that corresponds 
look at the syntax that's important for that field and then copy, paste, and edit as appropriate. Once you're done, go ahead and save this and you'll show it to your, your uh, SAP Business One partner for review and in preparation for the imports. But you are not done with just this one template. There are about 10 templates that you can fill in with depending upon what data you're populating. Usually there are three common ones that are populated. The generic business partner information. The second one is the addresses because you can have multiple addresses for a single uh, business partner. And then same thing with contacts. The, the third one is the, the contact employee template. And this is because each organization can have multiple contacts that you're storing in the system. Just like we saw earlier here with these two tabs. Addresses, I have multiple addresses, a bill to address with information, and then three ship to addresses that have different names and addresses, and then contact people. So let's take a look at the address one first. And you can see here, this field that's green is very important because this is the mapping or the key field that relates back to that original file that we were populating with the code of the customer. So you can remember C1000 was the code that corresponded to Tegris Consulting. And C1001 was the one that corresponded to SAP. And so whenever I need to add an address for Tegris Consulting, I would just list a new row or new, yeah, a new row with the code as the key to let the system know that this, this name, or this address is gonna be added to this business partner. So I have two here. I might have the main office and the main office two um, that I'm gonna populate for Tegris Consulting with an address. And you'll notice here, this is the street, which stores the address and the suite number, um, the zip code, the city, the state, the country. And this field is the type whether it's a shipping address or a bill to address. And you can see here, I have valid values, once again, of two potential values that can be populated here. And so you go ahead and do this for all of your business partners that you have in the system. Like I said, you can have unlimited. So with SAP, the customer SAP C1001, I've got four addresses I'm bringing in. One bill to, which is this one, and then three ship to's, which are these three. I've given them separate names, addresses, etc. And a lot of times you're going to do some additional editing here because you might have five separate fields that store data for the street, whereas SAP has one. So you might have to combine those together with some of your Excel formulas um, and use, use your knowledge there of Excel formulas to make this quicker and simpler for doing mass updates and edits of your addresses, combining, editing, replacing, etc., etc. But the most important thing to remember is you add a new row for each separate address or name you're gonna to give to an address and then make sure that you enter the correct parent key or the code of that business partner to know so the system knows which one it's being brought in as. And then very similarly, the same formatting is for the contact employees. If you had multiple contacts for any given business partner, you would wanna bring those in here as well. And so this key that's highlighted green is very important. It's the one that's maps and it's the same, you know, it's the same, uh, it's usually the same piece of information that's being stored here in column C, the card code. They're gonna be identical. Um, so go ahead and populate the same information twice here. And then for the rest of these fields, common ones that are populated are the name of the contact, what position they hold, what's their telephone number maybe. If they have a second telephone, go ahead and populate it. They have a cell phone, do they have a fax? And then the most common one is the email address that gets populated. So go ahead and pop, fill in all the fields that are important to you. Um, and if you have additional ones that maybe um, are uncommon, you can just hover over them and find the format that SAP wants. So, you know, what's the birth date? What's the gender? Um, if they have a password that you need to store for their information, et cetera, et cetera. Fill this in, have a new row for, for each separate contact and then assign it to the correct business partner. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and save all these. So the OCPR is the one for contact employees. Save that. Save the one that you just did for addresses. And save the one that you did for the original business partner data. And then let, let your um, SAP Business One partner take a look and help you go through and minimize any errors or, or syntax um, items before you get ready for the import. 
but hopefully today's session gave you an idea of what the template looks like, what fields need to be populated, um, and helped you maybe not get overwhelmed as to all the different fields that are here. And learn to remember, start off by finding the fields that are important to you, and then go one by one and find those and copy and paste into the SAP template rather than going and trying to find each individual one by one and going through hundred, all hundred of these fields. Uh, so that concludes our session for today. Um, please take a look at our other videos for other tips and tricks around SAP Business One.